We are back. That's right. We are back to the race and ethnic relations on campus podcast show. My name is Dr. B. Welcome back. It has been over almost two weeks now since the last show. And this show is entitled, this is show number 29. And it's entitled Coronavirus Pandemic and College Students Part 2. That right, that's right. Part 2. Coronavirus Pandemic and College Students Part 2. Uh, we are actually in a holding pattern across the country here in the United States, colleges and universities, as well as every industry uh, in a kind of holding pattern as we receive the mandate to uh, stay put, stay in our areas, and only essential, do essential, uh, necessary uh, engagement and activity. So college students, administrators, faculty <laughs> must stay, do their work at home and now we're all primarily doing teleworking and guess what? Online classes. <laughs> so that's the setup. Let me just uh, give a shout out to our sponsors right now. Let me take care of my uh, uh, initial sponsors. I want to thank Podbean. Podbean for providing us a platform. Thank you, Podbean. Uh, thank you, uh, ABC Clio for publishing my book, 2018 book, Race and Ethnic Relations on Campus, Understanding Empowerment and Solutions for College Students. Thank you. Uh, I uh, uh, Let me say... Um, iHeart Radio, iHeart Radio, thank you for continuing to uh, broadcast us. Spotify, Spotify, Google Play, Google Play, uh, as well as YouTube, YouTube, and our uh, new supporter, uh, uh, supporter and spon uh, not sponsors, but supporter. Uh, I'm going to give a, a shout out to freespot.com. Freespot.com. We have been informed that uh, uh, Race and Ethnic Relations on Campus podcast show has uh, uh, reached the top 10 in ethnic podcasts uh, across across the globe. Uh, so we want to give a free uh, uh, a free shout out a shout out to f a free Feedspot and uh, Feedspot offers several services to consumers and to market businesses across industries. Uh, they do uh, ish, uh, things like content reader, email digest, data curation, blogger outreach, blog promotion, and brand monitoring. So uh, this is a quick shout out to Feedspot.com. <laughs> so thank you for supporting us, Feedspot, and. Uh, we look uh, continue to uh, assist you in in uh, in uh, our co potential uh, our continual collaboration. So thank you for uh, providing us uh, uh, an awareness of our. We're in the top ten of ethnic podcast shows across the country. Uh, so with that said, um, here we are on show number twenty nine. Show number twenty nine. Wow. It has been uh, uh, an amazing ride these past couple of weeks. And I just want to uh, say to all uh, college students, uh, you're doing an outstanding job of making the adjustment to, uh, to the uh, coronavirus situation and what's happening at your individual colleges and universities. Uh, again, I've been t uh, getting uh, information from several of my colleagues across the country. Uh, now, I'm in the North Carolina, but I'm also getting information from uh, the West Coast, California, also from the uh, South, uh, from the uh, uh, South, uh, what is it, the um, South, mm, West, Southern, uh, portion of the, uh, the United States, uh, uh, New Mexico. Uh, I'm also getting information from uh, uh, further on the mid-central uh, mid part of the United States. Uh, and, uh, and, I'm, and I'm located, uh, we're, I'm located in the southeast portion of the United States. All across the country, basically, uh, universities and colleges are, are going to uh, their back continuing with uh, their uh, university and college activities, but primarily placing most of their activity online and, and asking their uh, employees to do teleworking, the staff to do teleworking, asking the professors and faculty to switch 
if they have face-to-face -face classes, which 90, 99% have face-to-face -face class, switch to online delivery, <laughs> and... Um, and the uh, and uh, continue with the as much activity of the uh, regular uh, college and university events that are happening. Move them to virtual uh, activity. So this has caused a major shakeup. Quite frankly, <laughs> let me just give you this: uh, a major shakeup, uh, because here in the in the states, the United States, we 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 do have the infrastructure now which was so fascinating and I'm going to tailor it to you know what's happening at at this university uh, excuse me where I'm at oh, excuse me um, uh, where I'm at uh, and, and and it relates to every college and university in, in varying aspects uh, how they're delivering uh, providing services for their uh, their their students and to see how and recognize how the students uh, are, are adjusting to this now uh, let me go to uh, uh, what's happened and last time I spoke with you we were in uh, a holding uh, uh, situation it's just started to develop and uh, that's when students were on spring break spring break or just getting ready to go on spring break well after more information, more uh, cases were identified in the United States. We have federal officials, state officials, university college officials said, okay, students, do not come back after spring break. Uh, they were trying to get students not to come back and those that were on, uh, on campuses to stay put. Well, now it's almost two weeks out and a week after them, two weeks out, uh, and another week after, this is another mandate. Uh, now they are, uh, we are just, uh, they're said we're switching to all online activity. Students need to take whatever belongings, uh, all their belongings really, from their uh, dorms, apartments, and go to their permanent place of residence. And, uh, and for faculty and, uh, who are delivering their classes to go all online and let me just say this uh, that was uh, I've also uh, from a faculty standpoint uh, we had uh, at my this university at, at ECU we had a faculty meeting to discuss how we're gonna adjust and and it, <laughs> and it was it was eye-opening to say the least then so I'm just gonna stop right there on that part um, so, uh, but what's so fascinating, and here's, here's what's not being discussed, uh, there's a lot of, uh, let me just say, there's still a lot of, um, uh, fear, uh, and anxiety out there because of the, uh, coronavirus situation, and everyone is adjusting to it, whether, uh, taking precautions, uh, wearing masks, uh, wearing different, uh, gloves, uh, when they go into uh, the store or in a, a particular place uh, or, uh, you know, a business, everyone has their different strategies to protect themselves. And the stores are doing their part to, to maintain that social distance and to maintain any possible, uh, to deter any possibility of transmitting uh, the virus to uh, complete strangers or uh, patrons or clients or businesses. Now, what's so ha interesting? How uh, here's the I'm I'm moving into. Uh, let me just say uh, our businesses are adjusting uh, more of distance, but also delivery and uh, deli they're changing their strategy, delivering uh, products uh, more online, delivering their their content and their their foods. Uh, to uh, delivering to home and place and all of that, and so all of us have to make these adjustments. Uh, and so it's interesting to see how other businesses, industries are adjusting to uh, this uh, this um, this w holding pattern. <laughs> this holding pattern. Now let me get back to uh, college students and the university situation. Now. <coughs> Uh, the the ramifications of this is that uh, wow 
We have to truly depend upon our infrastructure now that's uh, supposedly was put in place in, in this, all this online teaching and infrastructure of uh, using our advanced technology <laughs> and actually use it as the base. Not, not an addition to our learning in the college environment, but as our base. As the primary means to teach our students. That has sent shock waves. Shock waves. To a lot of colleges and universities. Administrators. Presidents. Chancellors. And even college students. Because even though college students are utilizing. Many times the latest technology. On their phone. On other devices, on other platforms. It's another thing to get all of their learning from an online system. <laughs> However, it's delivered. It's an adjustment for a lot of college students. And I do feel your pain. Some have, uh, are not accustomed to it. It's a different way of learning that's what i'm getting to it's a different way of learning and some students are just kind of used to it up but majority are mm, uh, they they're they're just they're making the adjustment but it's it is a transition so i want to uh, really give a shout out to all the college students and uh, and give you the props to say thank you for making the transition to adjusting <laughs> to however you're getting your your course content, uh, however you're getting it, whether it's by a video, whether it's by Zoom, whether it's by podcasting lectures, webcasting lectures. Let me just say this. I deliver. I teach my classes online. I deliver my content through podcasting and webcasting. I've been doing it. Oh, let me just. Oh my God. Oh, did I do this? Yes, I made that turn. Mm, I made that turn. I've been doing this since for the past actually 13 years here at East Carolina University. Teaching my graduate classes and undergraduate classes, so, uh, one of them, uh, on online. And the reason why I've been doing this for the past 13 years and. Fortunate to actually develop uh, a set of classes and put it into a certificate program. Uh, let me just do a quick shout out. Uh, my certificate program is Ethnic and Rural Health Disparities Graduate Certificate Online Program. Uh, <laughs> and the reason why I've been doing this for the past 13 years. Uh, I, uh, before I arrived here, I was out in California. Uh, in charge of a program out there. But when I arrived here in North Carolina, one thing that the advantage of North Carolina, they had a great infrastructure, online infrastructure. They invested in online uh, teaching. They had different programs that were all on different yeah, programs and majors already online. Different uh, departments. Uh Colleges had their programs online, so I saw this as a major advantage uh, by coming here. So when I first arrived here, I took as a faculty member took the time to take all the learning modules of how to move a face-to-face -face class. To online at the higher education level that is colleges universities and for graduate students so the first couple of years I took all the available training modules and got to know the staff very well of those who were teaching teaching it and at that time many of my uh, colleagues thought I was wasting my time doing it <laughs> and uh, I don't know why but I just felt like Wow, you have this great infrastructure and system. Take advantage of it. So anyway, I took all the training modules and felt very comfortable with transitioning my face-to-face -face lecture classes that I've been teaching for a number of years. Transition them to online. And uh, 
it felt very comfortable after it got and it's a growing phase it's a it's it's a tri, it's a trial and error when you actually transition your pl classes to completely online so and I went through that trial and error and feel now feel uh, since 13 years 12 years you know, actually started 13 years but probably uh, year 11 that's when I felt very comfortable with my online classes and um, and then my students felt very comfortable with the delivery of the content and the testing and everything how we interact differently online versus face-to-face -face. so uh, and man, matter of fact uh, I'm celebrating the 10th year anniversary of my ethnic and rural health disparities graduate certificate online program with over 42 graduates from that program uh, and so uh, now that now here's that's the little backdrop of my my uh, experience with online now that we have to totally uh, mandate utilize online teaching as the primary it is uh, I, I felt very comfortable and informing my students we do not have to make any adjustments <laughs> I'm keeping everything the same no major adjustments keep the same format versus uh, some of my colleagues are you know really uh, trying to make that transition put it that way calmly and, and I hear from other universities that uh, and other students saying that their professors are you know, really uh, uh, you know not uh, doing their best to to deliver their their course content to their to their students so and the reason why I bring this up here here we go guess what uh, when we have a system already in place it's up to the professionals to prepare themselves for the honest unexpected the unexpected and this coronavirus situation obviously is the unexpected shutting down universities colleges putting them on a hold, holding pattern for X number of weeks and even of course uh, you know here uh, th th this affects primary schools uh, you know um, K through 12 uh, primary school education they had to shut down uh, all the public schools all the private schools and they have to deliver their course content to this to their student population differently so I bring this up because again we have and I say we uh, our US system we have the infrastructure we have the technology. We have the tools. Let me just say this. But we got too comfortable. Too comfortable in our basic delivery of services. And services mean uh, teaching. Face to face. And not building in and expecting how everything changes and not preparing for the unexpected not transitioning a larger portion of our university activity for students of all backgrounds and students in all different situations to provide them for a different type of delivery of academic content at the higher education level So, why reason why I bring this up? Uh, we are, and I say we, the university college system are really to blame for the uh, for for the not being prepared for this, particularly when we already have the infrastructure and the tools, the resources to deliver it. Yet a vast majority did not buy into it. Did not buy into it. So now they have to buy it. This is the only route. That's what is surprising. 
Now, my college students from my class, and I'll just say this, my, my classes that I'm teaching, the undergraduate and graduate classes, they're making an adjustment. I'm, I've received some feedback uh, of some students that, you know, okay, I have to uh, take this, uh, exp is anything going to change? And, and, and basically, I said, nothing changes in our class. You still will be required to complete this research project, <laughs> this research proposal. You still will be required to complete these discussion boards. Because we're, we're still basically on schedule for the rest of the semester. Hello. <laughs> so, you know, it's business as usual on my part. And of course I make a slight adjustments in certain situations, but it's business as usual. But we have to realize these events, this type of situation, affecting all of us, all groups, all particular racial and ethnic populations, the same. Now this is where I'll bring up, of course, uh, you know, again, I think, uh, I don't know how it is at specific uh, colleges and universities and how it, it is affecting certain communities a little bit differently because obviously certain communities don't have the infrastructure, may not have, uh, again, the, obviously the, uh, the higher speed internet to receive uh, uh, our content delivery. But at this point in time, I haven't received any any comments, and I'm and I'm in a state that is a rural state, rural, designated as rural, designated as underserved, and thus far I haven't received any uh, information from my students that they're not they're having problems receiving our course content. Because we are in a rural state, we're in a un, uh, you know a state that's really underserved. That's unfortunately does not get the uh, higher amounts of funding for education. Uh, so uh, uh, and thus far, I haven't received any response back, and it's it's unfortunate that we are in this situation as a state. <coughs> but the at least the UNC system provided a a good. Um, mm, let me say, online distance education system in place. It's just a matter of getting the clients, and the clients mean <laughs> uh, staff, administrators, and faculty, as well as students to buy into it more so. But it's really those three, staff, administrators, and faculty. Students will tend to always make the adjustment. Whatever is presented to them. They'll find a way. And then we can find the resources. To assist students. And I, I, I truly do applaud. All the students out there. For making the adjustment. Not. oh, They're worried. About completing. And particularly I feel for. Uh, you know those who are seniors out there. Who are unfortunately being. You know have to make the adjustment of. Of, of whether they're graduating this spring semester. And now we have to, yeah, let me bring this up. How we are, uh, the university and our uh, uh, activities, such as commencement, has ha we have to deliver that differently now. We can't collectively come together in a reg regular graduation ceremony. We have to deliver it online, virtual. We can do that! And matter of fact, I told, uh, <laughs> oh, dang, did I do, yeah, I, I requested, I'm, I'm glad that our university has decided to continue various uh, activities such as research uh, week, uh, research, different activities that students need to be involved, they were going to cancel it, but then they said, we can use our virtual tools, yes, you can, and then, and then they said, yes, we're going to continue it, so now, you know, commencements are across the country, and I've seen uh, other commencements said they're going to deliver their commencement online. That's a good thing. Try to keep things as normal as possible. We just have to deliver it in a different way to students and uh, uh, faculty and staff have to communicate a little bit differently, have, have meetings that are virtual. 
uh, take advantage of our t uh, online tools so so students can keep so everything can still remain as 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 normal as possible as consistent as possible and cause this is just a temporary uh, on hold we don't know exactly how long it's going to last but it's still you got to think of it of it as temporary but you also have to prepare that these events can occur again okay we don't want it to occur again but they can occur again so uh, we want to continue to move forward we want to continue to support college students in their best capacity yet we got to make sure that we are adjusting and putting in tools and preparing for the future for more online activity and and unfortunately uh, and hope that this doesn't happen again but we have to prepare our entire system and let me just say this policies have to change stepwise procedures of how we deliver care and how we deliver our services have to change to the new reality students of the future will be more prepared students can adjust we I say we faculty administrators have to put things in place and make the adjustment. So I'm very proud to uh, uh, to recognize how my students have made the adjustments uh, to uh, the coronavirus pandemic situation in their courses. And I will continue to learn other ways to deliver my course content, but I'm keeping everything the same uh, 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 about just about and. Uh, and just waiting to see how long our holding pattern will continue now that we're at the end of March and moving into the month of April. And uh, again, patience is the key. Patience. Developing new strategies. You're going to have new businesses uh, develop. Hopefully my, I think... My online certificate program will even will receive even more attention now because programs, traditional programs, will have to move entirely online. And guess what? Students are ready. They will be ready. They are ready. And our systems are in place. So with that said, I'm 27 minutes in. I just want to uh, again. This is, and you know, this are uh, you know, and, and I can feel the anxiety. I understand that, and yes, you know, uh, but I think the most important thing is try to uh, follow what all our health officials say. Stay vigilant. Uh, keep your distance. Practice basic public health hygiene. Constantly. Keep things as routine as possible. Continue to stay healthy. Work out. Keep things normal in your home environment. As normal as possible in your neighborhoods. Continue to provide new areas of creativity <laughs> uh, in your interactions online with your family members, friends, and associates. And uh, we will get through all of this. That's the great... And I also see uh, now, uh, now with uh, different universities, they're presenting uh, how they're all coming together and we have to work as one. And they're coming out with their promotional uh, videos online. I see it on Twitter. I see it on Facebook. I see it on LinkedIn too. Uh, so that's really good to see, uh, and uh, I would encourage more colleges and universities to do those video spots, those video promotions to uh, to to provide more encouragement for their student base to let them know that things we will we're all together and we're moving forward. And from this show, I want to say from the race and ethnic relations um, on campus podcast show. Uh, I, I, I'm, I know that each and every one of you of all various racial and ethnic backgrounds uh, have a wide variety of 
issues that are on your doorstep that are on uh, that you have to deal with that's different from the mainstream yet we're all in this together each and every group whatever your situation is we are all we truly are all in this together <laughs> that's uh, and, and and it's you know i i, I make light heart of it but it's, it's serious but i want to keep it as positive as possible because you will see those who who are uh, who are ready to take this on and adjust, and then those who are really struggling through it, and and so we just got to encourage everyone to, okay, simmer down, don't panic. We can get through this, and all of us, all of us are going through this, regardless of race and ethnicity. So there you go. This is show number 29. Show number 29 is entitled Coronavirus Pandemic and College Students Part 2. Part 2. My name is Dr. B. Please do not hesitate to email me at uh, ejb678 at gmail.com. That's ejb678 at gmail.com. You can email me at also at my work at uh, work email, baileye.ecu.edu. I want to thank all our sponsors, all our sponsors, Podbean, ABC Clio, uh, iTunes, uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Play, Google Play. I uh, also thank Spotify, uh, iHeartRadio, Listen, uh, Listen.com. Oh, thank you, Listen. Uh, and listen and players FM. Uh, uh, also, uh, want to thank YouTube, YouTube, and uh, uh, an- another shout out to uh, to uh, one of our uh, listeners is feed uh, feedspot.com feedspot.com. Thank you for uh, posting us as the top ten ethnic podcast and appreciate your support and peach appreciate you reaching out to us and uh, we'll do our best to continue continue hopefully we'll continue to be at the top of the top 10 ethnic podcasts globally and that's what we're trying to do here at race and ethnic relations on campus podcast show i am dr b stay safe everybody peace out